Hey everyone, welcome to Birds of a Feather. Today I'm taking these soda cans and we're going to be making some artwork with it. Specifically, we're going to be taking this pattern and making it into a mosaic. So I guess in a sense, since we're using pop cans, we can call this artwork pop art. To get started, I'm going to cut up the pattern you see here and break down these cans so that I've got pieces just like that. Meet me right back here and we'll get started. Unless you have a can opener that can open one end, I think the best way to go about it is to get an X-Acto knife. To get it started, I'm just going to insert my smaller blade and I'm gonna rock it just to get it started. And there it goes. And then you're just going to continue coming around and rocking the knife. Okay, so here we are at the end. And again, be mindful of these sharp bits here. Okay, so there's one end done. Then I'm going to take a pair of scissors and I'm just going to run it right down. Now you're just going to get in there as best you can and I think what I would recommend is maybe even cutting a second line. So if you bend this down, that should allow you to get in there better with the scissors. To cut the rest. Now we're back at the beginning. And there you go. So that's wet because it was washed. And I'm going to line up the ruler with another square on the grid. Then I'm going to take my blade and start a little bit off the mat and just run it along. Whoops. And this is why you wear a glove on the left hand because this can easily slip as it just did. Okay, I can hear that's pretty good. I'm just gonna bend it up and it snaps right off. And that can be disposed. Now I've got two right angles. I'm gonna flip my piece, line it up. I've got an iron here, an antique iron for a weight which is really helpful. And again, I'm gonna line up and run my blade. You don't have to apply too much pressure because you can score several times if you need to. And then it's just a matter of popping it back and snapping it off. And there you go. Snaps right off. Now again, we're gonna run this just along a table edge to uncurl it. 
I have two of my mosaic templates here. I'm going to set one aside and this one we're going to cut up. So I just want to make note that when you do cut we're going to be cutting away the black lines because that effectively is going to be our grout lines. So you want the pieces to be smaller and those lines are going to show through black when we mount this to the substrate. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut my first strip here. This is going to be background. So taking care to cut off the black. So I'm going to bring back my piece of can that I'll be using as the background. And then you can basically just stick it down and cut away. So what I'm using for that is this double side tape. Just going to take it and stick it right there. Actually try to stick it down. And this is why I cut the edges straight. I'll put one more piece at the other end. And there. So this time I'm going to come along with some scissors. and cut away. So there's my strip. And then I'm just going to cut on the line. So there's piece one. Now as piece one is done, I'm just going to set that aside to show you. I'm going to come over to the template and lay that down. Now as I cut, I'll be filling up this full template and then we'll be ready to stick our pieces to the substrate. So here's another piece, I've got it taped down and I'm cutting away the black. So you don't see any black on that piece. And then I'm just gonna put something underneath here to catch this little bit here. I'm gonna cut away this little piece. Now you can see that's what I've cut away and moving right along, cut on this side of it and there's my other piece. So once I finish cutting my pieces, I'm going to put them into place on my template. So I'm just putting the pattern pieces onto the piece of metal now and I just want to point out that you really need to make the most of your metal because I don't have a lot of these green color cans so I'm just going to um, create the best layout I can to make the most of it. And I also want to point out that I've run out of double tape and I'm just using some green tape here and rolling it back on itself. So here I've got a piece of green tape and I'm just going to roll it back on itself. and stick it down to my piece. And you should have at least three pieces of tape for a long piece like this. And then I'm just going to bring it to the work and stick it down. So now to cut, it's just a matter of taking your scissors and cutting along the lines.
all the pieces of the pattern are now on my template, as you can see. Now, you do have to make sure that they're perfectly flat, so you might have to just finesse some of these a little bit as you go. Now, in order to get this onto the substrate, what I'm gonna use is this book protector from the dollar store. So this is a clear material. It's just got a backing on it right now. So as you'll see me do later, I'm just gonna peel it up and then I'm gonna stick it down to this board right here. It's gonna be sticky side up. I'm going to be printing off a duplicate template of my pattern but this time I'm going to mirror image it. It's going to be backwards and flipped. And then what I'll do is take each piece and I'll be able to lay it over the template because it'll be clear. And I'm going to stick my pieces down, face side down, onto the template. And then I'll be able to glue the entire back and then in one shot, I'll be able to glue it onto the substrate. So here is my mosaic with the tin pieces ready to go. I'm just gonna slide this out of the way. And what I've done next is I've prepared a mirror image of the mosaic. So to attach it to the substrate, I've got this clear book protector and I'm just gonna cut a piece. very curled so let's just do that I think I'm gonna cut it at the 17 inch mark that should give me enough extra width okay now I'm gonna roll this on the edge of my table to try to uncurl it a little bit before I use it now that the adhesive vinyl is perfectly flat, I'm gonna take my mirrored image, I'm gonna flip it over, and center it. Then I'm gonna tape it down with some green tape. That's so it can't shift. Now that that's done, we're going to flip the piece over. And then we're going to peel this back. And for now, I'm just going to peel it and fold it. And then I'll do this side. I'm just going to peel it back and once again I'm going to fold it. Now I'm going to tape this to the surface. I'm just going to fold this in on itself. And fold it. Then I'm going to take a piece of green tape and stick it right down. So that's good and secure on one side. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Just fold it in on itself. Make sure this is perfectly flat. And then I'm gonna tape the other edge.
I'm going to do the same at the bottom. But instead of folding it up, I'm just going to tape it right down. So nothing can shift. Hopefully that's lying perfectly flat. I don't think I'm going to um, bother with the top of this. So, once I peel that back, it leaves the stickiness perfectly exposed. And I'm going to take each of my pieces and I'm going to flip it over on the paper part I'm going to line it up on the black and stick it down. I'm going to do that for all the pieces. Just before the battery gave out on me, I was sticking these down face down with the paper still on, but I've since changed my mind, so I'm going to remove the paper. And what the paper serves to do is provides the number that corresponds to where it's being stuck down. So it's very helpful to have it on, but it's not necessary to keep it on now. The great thing about this vinyl is that it isn't so sticky that you can't lift it up. Here's piece 34. I'm going to remove the paper. Take off all the tape with it. It's easy to miss this invisible double-sided tape. Now, if you're noticing that some of your pieces are wrinkly, um, just get a roller like this and just roll them a little flat. I'm not gonna do it on this surface, of course, because it's sticky. I'm just gonna do it off to the side here. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring it back and put it down. Just line up the corners, make sure that the black is showing through. And again, you can lift it if you have to. Okay, so I don't exactly have a straight edge here. So I think I'm gonna lift this piece just give it a little snip. Okay, it's looking a little better. I'm still a little shy right here. So if you're particular about it, you can lift it and give these things a little bit of a trim. There. Now you can see the black showing through as it should. Now I work left to right so that I can, because I'm right-handed, and I can rest my hand here where it isn't sticky and position the piece. I just find that so much easier. Now believe me guys, this does go a heck of a lot faster. It's just that I've got a camera right in front of my face. So it's really difficult to see where I'm putting these things down. Let's try it from this end. And here's the last piece for this row. And there we go. So now I'm ready to start this row here and I'm gonna continue working in the same manner from right to left. And then I'll probably do the perimeters first and fill in. So I think I'm gonna be doing this off camera so that I can get this camera out of the way and I can actually reach my area here. And I'll be back to show you the reveal. Here it is all stuck down. 
So at this point, I'm going to put the backing paper back on. Then I'm going to take a rubber roller and I'm just going to roll it over the entire back. When I'm satisfied that everything is stuck down, I'm going to lift the tape on the sides. Then I'm going to carefully flip it over just to check. Okay, so at this point, I think I can peel away the pattern. So at this point, I've attached the backing onto the other side, the sticky side, and I flipped it over and everything is well stuck down. I've cut along two sides here so that I can attach it to my substrate once the back of this is glued. And for now, I've just left my pattern in place. So next step is to flip this back over and apply glue on the back side of each of these pieces. And then we're gonna be sticking it to the substrate and we're gonna be done. So here's that mystery substrate I alluded to. It's a um, computer monitor that's no longer working. I found it curbside. And uh, we're gonna be using that to mount our artwork. So we're gonna get it glued up and then we're going to just lift it right onto the face of this and stick it down. I had a change of heart about using glue because I can't find one with a long enough open time to do this all in one shot. So what I'm going to be using is some double face tape. I've got a roll of it here. I'm going to leave this backing on because that'll help me position it later. As you can see, I've already started in the upper left corner here. And I'm just going to roll it out to the approximate width, not exactly to the edge. Just bend it back on itself so I know where to cut it. And then I'm gonna snip it off and apply it on. Now I'm doing this in the middle. If you like, you can go right to the edge, but I just wanna give myself a little bit of leeway so that I'm able to shift things as I apply it to the substrate. So I'm just gonna continue on in that manner, just rolling out bending back, and then cutting with the scissors. Once all the pieces are applied, I'm then going to peel off the backing, and then this paper which I've left attached, it's not going to stick to the tape itself. I'm just gonna leave it in place. And if I can show you what I've done here, I've folded up the bottom and that's exactly where my piece is going to fit on the substrate, right along that fold so that I know where to position it at the bottom. Now that the double face tape is stuck down to the tin, I'm just going to peel off the backing and stick it down to the substrate. Before attaching the mosaic, be sure to wipe down your glass surface with some Windex. As you can see, I still have the backing on here from the original adhesive vinyl and I've bent it back where I want it to sit at the bottom and that will allow it to sit perfectly within the monitor here. Just be sure to center it exactly where you want it and I think that's looking good. So add your tape onto the bottom so that you can hinge it and bend it forward. I'm just going to get another piece for the middle here. So 
So once you're satisfied with the placement, as you can see, you can bend it forward. And what I've done here is I've already pre-creased my starting point. There. Now you've got your first row stuck down. Now you can lift your tape. Now you can gently peel back. Just take it slow because you don't want any air bubbles in here. Can take one of these scrapers and just ensure that everything is well stuck down. Okay, once you're satisfied that everything is sticking well, you can lift off the vinyl. And do this slowly so that nothing comes up with it. That will leave your tin can exposed. 